Here we have job number 11749, and it's another faulty Nintendo Switch. This one has a bit of a weird issue though. I'm just making sure, because my colleagues have tested, I'm just making sure there's nothing wrong with the charging port, and it doesn't look as if there is anything wrong with it at all. So that means that now I can show you exactly what's going on. When we put in a charging cable to this Nintendo Switch, we only seem to be getting around about 200 milliamp. My colleague has tested uh, this board in another Switch as well, in another housing, and we still get nothing on the display. It doesn't boot up, it doesn't go from 200 milliamps up to 800 milliamps, which would indicate fast charging. It does have 15 volts, but you get nothing on the screen. With that being said, because the port looks fine, I am just gonna plug it in and see what happens. So we do get 16 volts, aka 15 volts. It's just the ammeter is a little bit out, but we get a 100 milliamp draw. Now I know from experience with this specific ammeter, it should start about 0.05 milliamps and then drop down to about 0.02. And that is a good indication that either when I've changed the charging port or M92T36 that the switch is working. However, this one stays at 100 milliamps and just sits there. Let me try the other way and see if we get the same sort of reading. Yeah, 100 milliamps, as you can see, 15 volts. Okay, so let's check for any shorts that we have. First off, considering that we have checked the port and there's no damage there. And that sounds silly, but we're gonna start with the fuse right here. Meet it in continuity mode. We're just gonna see if the fuse has continuity, which it should do. Which it does, the fuse has continuity. That's good news, so the fuse is okay. We call this the indestructible fuse because I've only seen it go bad once. And now we're gonna travel up the board to M92T36, which could most definitely be a culprit here. Just checking for shorts around the area, the pie cap seems to be okay this cap seems to be fine this is okay all right doesn't seem to be any issues here from what i can see so m92 on the face of it looks to be all right inspection of the board as well we don't seem to have any issues that jump out at me straight away this cap looks a little bit off-centered mind is this cap a little bit bulged or are my eyes just playing tricks on me it looks like it's been replaced or something could be like that from factory, but we're gonna test around the BQ area. This IC is responsible for charging. So let's see if we've got any shorts around here. That cap seems to be okay. That's fine. We're gonna check the coil as well. We should have continuity through this coil, which we do, no problems at all. And again, just upon inspection, everything looks okay. Let's turn over to P13 on the back of the board. And what do we get on the cap? The cap is absolutely fine, which we know from the other side of the board where M92T36 is. And I don't think these filters have anything to do with the charging, but I'm gonna check them anyway. Okay, no issues with those either. Looking at the actual port itself. Do we have any movement on the pins to signify maybe a loose port? I don't believe so. Very rarely you see these pins actually faulty. It's usually the customer has damaged the charging port and that's why it always needs changing. It doesn't just go bust on its own. Okay, no, that seems fine. Again, I'm just further inspecting the board to see what's going on, see if anything jumps out at us. We have the max IC here, nothing that I can see. No damage so far. All looks okay in my opinion. Just checking on continuity on the CPU on the back. Some of these caps I know are low impedance. So it won't be the issue. Yeah, so we got 69 ohms there. But yeah, I think from a CPU perspective, we're okay. And this is on the back of the board now, which I'm gonna look around. I can't see anything obvious at all. And it's uh, a little bit frustrating because we don't have any shorts. Could be that we change out BQ, give it a test, and then change out M92. It could be either of those. That's fine as well. I've had issues before with the first revision of boards with these diodes and they do cause some issues with charging because we have one next to the port as well. Here, look, there's a fancy name for them, but I can't remember, something diodes. Okay, I'm gonna remove them anyway because they're not needed and there's so many different technicians out there who have had issues with these diodes. So the advice is just to remove them. So I'll do that in a second, see if it changes the story. Before I do that, I just wanna confirm that we don't have any bent pins in the LCD connector. Just to make sure that that's not why we're not getting a display. No, that connector is fine. No issues there at all. I think it's a very slim chance that this just magically fixes our issue. If it does, I will be flabbergasted, but that would be amazing. So I've just tested with the board and I get the exact same issue, exact same, it's around about 100 milliamps. I've just put everything back in the case just to see what I get now that the battery's all plugged in and we are reading around about 500 milliamps. 
stable 500 milliamps with 15 volts. When I put my probes on the battery whilst it's taking a charge, you can see that there is a steady increase in voltage. So M92T36 is a power IC, which is responsible for delivering power, but the BQ chip is responsible for charging the battery. So which one of those isn't put in the switch into a fast charge state, but it's also not turning on the switch because we're not getting anything on the screen, even though the battery has voltage in it enough to be able to turn the switch on. I think it's going to be M92 T36, even though we're not getting any shorts around the chip. So I'm going to start with M92 and see what happens. Put a tiny bit of flux around it. I say tiny, mountains. I'm going to apply some more flux and whilst the board is hot, I'm just going to apply some leaded solder to mix with the unleaded. Now we're going to go in with the new chip. And done. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just adding flux around the outside, getting our smaller tipped iron. And just going to take this off. Make sure we're all good. on every side. Perfect. Rotate the board to make my life easier. And final side, the big one. There we go, nice job. Now we give it a clean. Check our work, make sure all is good. Might be a little bridge on that end one. Just gonna drop a little bit of flux. It's not worth risking it because we could do some serious damage by applying power. There we go. Okay. This side looking good. This side looking good. This side looking good. And this side looking good. Okay. No bridges on any of the caps from what I can see as well. Let's give it another test to see if that was our issue. Again, before I go ahead and test, I should check to see if there's any shorts around M92 after we've installed it. Again, all the connections look fine. No, no shorts around M92. So theoretically, this should work if, any, if M92 was issued in the first place. So let's go over to our face cam and just give it a whirl. Okay, so what we're looking for is anything but 100 millivolts. Give us like 50. Okay, back to 100, is it? So exactly the same issue that we had before. I think I said millivolts, I meant to say milliamps. Yeah, you can see there, exactly the same issue. Let's turn it around. And we're still, we're still getting 15 slash 16 volts. 100 milliamps, same issue. Okay, maybe not M92 then. Maybe it is the BQ charging chip. It wouldn't be anything to do with the actual port itself because the battery has voltage, therefore the console should turn on, but we're not getting a light a battery indicator to show that the console's working. So it wouldn't be anything to do with the actual port itself, I doubt. So I think we go ahead and change the BQ charging chip and see what happens. I don't understand how that's gonna have anything to do with the console turning on. Okay, here we have ye old BQ. We're gonna go from underneath the board to remove this chip. And it makes it quite difficult because this is dangling in midair. So I need to, uh, so I need to be careful with this. I can very easily knock a lot of components here. The reason we go from underneath is because of the connector that we have just south of the image that you see now. Very easy to burn that whilst taking this off. So I just feel like it's safer to take like that. And again, I'm just gonna add some flux and tin this with leaded. Here we have the BQ chip. Okay, this might dance a little bit. Come on. That's it, you got it. There we go. I'm going to have to squeeze this down and we're going to have some uh, solder squeezage. It's just going to make sure it's all connected properly. This one might be a little bit lopsided, but it should be okay. I'll confirm shortly. Again, a nice clean. Give it a quick check. Make sure that we don't have any silly bridges. All good. Okay. Let's give it a test now. Do we get 100 milliamps still? If so, we know that it's wrong. Ah, Not that the ammeter is wrong, that the change in the BQ chip wasn't the uh, the right call. Okay, yeah, 100 milliamps, exactly the same issue. So M92 replaced, BQ replaced, which are the two most common faults, I would say, with a Nintendo Switch. Don't see how it's gonna be an issue with the port, baffled. I just thought I'd test it in the chassis again with the backlight connector and battery, etc. cetera. Um, and we're still getting that 500 milliamp draw. So yeah, still not working. 
I've just put the heat cam on um, just to see if there's anything that I could spot. And it seems to be as if this chip, it's not getting really, really hot, but it's hot enough to draw attention. The BQ chip on the back is getting hot, but that does normally get hot because it's charging the battery, so that's fine. But this, the Max 776, was getting relatively hot. Now, I'm pretty sure this is BGA, so once I remove this, I'm going to have to either see if we've got this chip in stock. If not, take it from a donut and reboot. But I'm just going to take this off now and see if that eradicates the short. Let's plug it in and see if our milliamp hours have changed at all. Yeah, okay. So we're starting to see like a... So 032029 is... A little bit better. Try this side as well. Yeah, zero two six zero three two. Okay. Uh, again, I'm not really. Res I I'm not too sure what that chip is responsible for, but I'll get it replaced and see if that sorts it. I was going to wait for the chip. However, I uh, I recently watched a video from uh, a bloke called Sorin. He's an absolute legend. If you want to know how to repair electronics in any way, shape or form, uh, this guy is incredible. The way he teaches, amazing. He literally just put out a video saying, soldering tutorial, how to solder an IC chip without reballing. I'd recommend watching it. It was really helpful to me. And I want to try that with this Nintendo Switch and the Max IC. So I've got a donor board in which I'm going to remove the Max IC BGA chip. I'm going to clear up the solder balls on it and I'm going to try it on this other Nintendo Switch. If that doesn't work, I'll just wait for the other chip to come that's already pre-balled and we'll go from there. It's worth a try, so let's give it a go. All right, so here we have the BGA chip that we need to take off a donor board. Try and keep it in the correct orientation as well. Get the board a little bit hot first. Apply a tiny bit of flux. Rotate it this way so it's easier for me to get off. And there we go. Pop. And then we take our little BGA chip. And you can see that we have some solder missing. So what happened on the video was just a tiny bit of flux. The chip's already hot. Soldering iron. Okay, that looks all right. Take our actual board and clean up the uh, the solder on here as well. Okay. Yeah, we look good there. We will also have flux on the chip. Got to get it the right way. Which I believe is this way. I have to put it in the correct position. Add some more flux. And let the board do the work. Okay, quick clean. You can actually see on here, we've got a lot of um, a lot of solder balls that have fallen out from the chip, which will be interesting to see if they've been squished underneath the chip or not. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. Again, just wanted to try this method and see if it works out. If you don't try these new things, you have to come into these things with an open mind because if you don't, you're never going to learn. And when you stop learning, I feel like that's an issue. Again, these are the little solder balls that I'm talking about here. See these? I'm just going to scoop them up. I'll also note as well, we don't know if that was the issue with this Nintendo Switch. If this doesn't work, it might not even be this, you know? For all we know, we might have soldered it correctly, but who knows? Not me, that's for sure. Let's give it a test. Okay, I've reassembled the Nintendo Switch with the battery. We were getting 500 milliamp hour draw before. So what do we get now? Moment of truth. If this works, it'll be amazing. Okay, we still get the 500 milliamp hour with not much movement so that's pretty much the same as what we had do we get no we get no battery charging symbol on the screen either so we have the exact same issue that we had before i'm just turning it around to see if i get anything different um and i don't it's still 500 milliamp hours um it could be that we've soldered that chip on incorrectly i highly doubt it though that is always a possibility regardless of what method you use so i will wait for the bga reball chip to come just all be nice for the customer if we could get this done a little bit quicker for them once that chip arrives i'll fit it in this and uh, see if we get any different reading here we are var we are back with the max ic that has come in the mail i just want to note as well if this doesn't work i am going to try the p13 usb chip as a last ditch attempt okay just make sure it's the right chip which it does seem like it. It says B on the end instead of A, but that'll be fine. Clear up these solder balls that we have here. Definitely better to use smaller wick. You can see I'm more prodding it than, than dragging it at the moment. There we go. Let's apply some hot air just to melt that flux again. Melt the burnt flux. Drop of isopropyl alcohol. Just to clear it up and just triply check that everything is good. Which it definitely seems it. 
nice tiniest bit of flux just on this surface and I'm just going to use a cotton bud to wipe it around. Take our Max IC, hold it roughly in place about here. Let's get it sat down. Now we apply a bunch more flux and flow it into place. We should see it dance in a second. There we go. You can see clearly it's on. Come off. Make sure it's nice and solid under there, which it is. It's not going anywhere. And now we just give it a clean. Whole boarded sizzling. Very hot. And another test. See what happens. Do I have faith? Not really, but here we go. 130 milliamps this time. Okay, so it's actually gone up a little bit. Let me just check the other side as well. 130 milliamps again. So both sides, 130 milliamps. So it's gone up by like 30 milliamps or so. I'm going to replace P13 and the charging port just as last ditch attempts. And I'll come back for one final test. Moment of truth, do we get anything on the switch after a port swap and P13 as well? Do we get charging both ways? We get it one way, that's for sure. 130 milliamps, exactly the same. Let me turn it around just to make sure the port is good. Yes, it is. It works both ways. 135 milliamps, exactly the same issue. Just to confirm, in the housing with a battery connected, we still have the 500 milliamp draw. Same with this one. I thought we were going to fix it, but such is repairs. Thank you for watching. If you have any idea what it might be, leave a comment down below so we can all learn it together and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.